<laughs> See, it's moving. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Good evening, this is Lonnie Clark, and this is Louisa Hamachek, and we are the hosts of The Last Nuke. And we're here, I think it's our third show, right, Louisa? Yep. And uh, we're gonna be doing 25 minutes together. We're gonna make this, we're making it as a YouTube video for our, my Nuts for Art YouTube channel, but it's mostly gonna be um, like for a podcast, for The Last Nuke podcast, which I'm putting up on my Spreaker channel, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, Spreaker.com. You can look under Lonnie Clark. And the shows I have, The Age of Fission, um, I beg your pardon, Nuclear Hot Seat, Operation Save the Earth, and we're going to also post up The Last Nuke. So uh, On KEPW. And on KEPW, we are submitting it to be a show that's a half an hour once a week, and they th we think it's gonna be on Thursdays at 7.30 to 8. And this is our new community radio station that's at, um, it's in the old Growers Market building downtown, across from the train station in the center yeah. of Eugene, and it goes out 24 miles to the community of the Eugene and Springfield area, and it's um, Eugene Peaceworks, gave us half their office as space and are the over umbrella for this community radio station. We're really glad to bring this information out on KEPW. Well, let's be clear. Eugene Peaceworks office is KEPW's office. Yeah. It's not like they gave them half the space. They're like, yeah. Eugene Peaceworks was the original nonprofit. And, and for they... years we've had Eugene Peaceworks and Eugene <clears throat> putting right. out a newspaper once every three months or so about the peace right. and environmental nuclear right. issues in the Northwest. And then they were affiliated with Oregon Peaceworks and it retreated to Eugene Peaceworks and now has reblossomed like um, Michael Reisel. It's come back out as a radio station. It's so cool. Well, what's cool is they got a bid. They actually put in a bid for uh, an FM radio station in 2016 and they won. Yay. And so they don't give Whatever out, they means. gave out 18 that year oh. and Eugene Peaceworks got it. They hadn't given Sweet. one out in like 30, 40 years. And it was the bed, bed result, end result of like some court order that said to the FCC, you have to give out more FM stations and people bid. Yeah. It was kind of like a fairness so, in reporting. So and here we, we are on KEPW begging them. Yeah. We're not begging them. They've nope. actually offered, if we produce a decent enough show that is entertaining enough, They'll put us on the air, and that's our goal with this uh, show, The Last Nuke. Yeah, and uh, really our goal is to um, inform our resident friends and neighbors about the uh, need to shut down the Columbia Generating Station, and so it's a great way to get out the information. Exactly, and immediately. Mm -hmm. Like, it is such a grave danger. People don't even realize the grave danger that the Columbia Generating Station is putting the entire Northwest. It, it, we're not alarmists. We're actually looking at documents and facts. And it's... And we've been uh, shown things from other activists with authoritative science-based uh, environmental groups like Physicians for Social Responsibility has organized a lot of the good research that's going on because these are scientists who are doctors who are doing that and nurses and all kinds of health practitioners of the Northwest are in the Oregon, Washington Physicians for Social Responsibility concerned with cancer and birth defects from the radiation. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's beyond, this is a thing, we know that it is in danger. Um, this last week, the Department of Ecology up in at Hanford, they basically, Hanford.gov, they came out with a report that basically outlines the horrible state of affairs up there, that buildings are collapsing, there's a lot of contamination. There are some areas that they're planning on de demol demolitioning, and they're having proposals for that, but some areas they're just saying, hey, we, it's not even, we're not even planning for that yet. They don't say they're not going to. They just say they're not going to plan for it. So comprehend that the Columbia Generating Station is on the Hanford site. Mm -hmm. Louisa has corrected me on that because <laughs> I was always saying it's only 12 miles, but it's actually on the Hanford Reservation site. It's on yeah. Hanford. And it's contaminated all over the place. Like they've been working on this over the years in different places. And then they just sort of conveniently forget and then they rebuild and... 
it's beyond comprehension the level of gross neglect. And there were so many different formats of um, throwing or leaving or storing the nuclear waste that came in different uh, formats. Like there are 17 nuclear reactor cores that are somewhere up at the Hanford Reservation, which is a the whole Hanford thing is like a bend in the river of about 40 miles long. Um, and the um, center of it, is the, the, who you need to go to is Columbia Riverkeepers dot org, org? And probably. Anyways, Columbia Riverkeepers have an excellent uh, brochure, uh, um, a whole booklet on the, the water uh, concerns around Hanford. And they have a map of all the different research and the plutonium production reactors. There were seven operating nuclear power plants in the bend in the river there on the Hanford Reservation in the 1940s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and they stopped in the 80s and left this one, the Columbia Generating Station, that could create electricity instead, and they converted it to a commercial nuclear power plant instead of a weapons, plutonium-grade weapons creation thing, or maybe it's still doing it. We're not sure. I know that they got stopped uh, by uh, the other group, uh, um, Heart of America Northwest. Jerry Paulette said that his group, I think along with Sierra Club, caught them at, they were about to slip in some MOX fuel and burn that in the nuclear power plant when refueling one year, and they got caught at it by these environmental groups um, and said, no, you don't, because MOX means mixed oxide fuels that they have mixed some plutonium waste in with and some pl other various substances. It's And so now they're coming up with a Russian mix. It's like a cocktail of a mixture of various MOX fuels coming together and different things. But at any rate, Jerry Paulette pointed out at a public hearing previous to them, he would give um, little talks to inform us what it was about. And he said that, that fuel, if there was a meltdown like Chernobyl or Fukushima, where it exploded the stuff up into the air of all the pieces of things, like the reactor core plus the containment building and all that flying up into the air and, mm -hmm. and then becoming ash that blows around the world in 26 days, um, that it would contain particles of plutonium. And that's so much hotter than uranium. It's so much more radioactive. It's so deadly any particle that will kill whatever it touches. You cannot live if a particle of plutonium touches you. Well, that's the thing. The risk of that is very minimal. That's what they say, because there's not that much, quote, that much. Except but for the earthquake now. Exactly. And this is the thing. It's not just the earthquake. But check this out. I want to say this. For our audiences that are on the YouTube, I'm holding up a drawing of a hand, gross hand drawing, and this is for our audience that is audio of kind of like how the Columbia River curves around like a, yeah. a, a big loop, like a big wide yeah. sea, right? So Louisa and her friends had this idea of building a canal just cutting off the river, coming down from Washington straight down practically across to Portland. I must give Toby Grant this idea um, because he thought it up and he passed on a few years ago. But he thought it up. He is the uh, descendant of Ulysses S. Grant or something like grandson, whatever it is. Anyways, he's my, he was my best friend, and he went to many public hearings with me, and he tried to bring this up, but he really he brought up anything he could at the public hearings that was helpful. But this was always in the back of his head, and then he passed on, so I want to carry it on and as they've never Toby's submitted idea. It, but I think this is a great idea. You basically build a canal from Washington down to the border, to the river at the bottom, where the border of Oregon and Washington no, is. No, you don't. And you no, it's not there. We need to show it on a different thing. It's a bend in the river above Richland. It comes back right. together. You'd cut back into the thing above, right around Richland. Oh, so you go to Richland, you stay in Washington and cut it off in Washington. Yeah, and because but then you, the river it's makes the another same bend. Effect. It's still the same effect. No, you effect. think that this is the bend in there. Yeah, we need to do it with another drawing yeah. of another river. I'm the. This may not be right accurate, now. but my point is, I yeah. drew, for those the audio people that are listening to yeah. this, I, this is my gross, like chicken scratch idea to show this because yeah. I think the idea of putting a canal connecting the two bottom parts of the river and drawing a canal and then isolating well bypassing the poison part yes, of the Columbia and, and with radioactive uh, this poison can dry out the part over here mm -hmm. 
that you're cutting it off on the east side can actually dry out mm -hmm. and they can actually remediate it better when it's not soaking. Yeah, and I mean, they can actually cut off that part. The very of the sad river. thing is, and it would have to be done very carefully and nicely because, anyways, the only remaining part of the Columbia River that has white water where the salmon want to spawn is where they left it so that it would pass by all these seven nuclear power plants in the old days, in which they ran the river right through it, uh, through each one of those in the 60s and stuff, and made the river quite radioactive in the old days. They didn't even use a secondary cooling pipe system. They just radioactivized water of the Columbia. As it was mighty, the mighty radioactive Columbia. Yep. Then they got, got caught on that that wasn't too cool when one of the workers had their dosimeter go off at after they were leaving to go home, and they ra uh, took the Geiger counter across him, and it was his tummy, and then they found that they asked him what he ate for lunch, and he ate clams from the Columbia River's mouth, where it goes out in in Astoria, in the mud flats of the estuary of the mouth of the Columbia River, were clams, and he ate canned clams for lunch from Astoria, and they were radioactive. Wow! And so they knew they'd made the whole friggin' river from. Richland to Astoria, radioactive in those days. Now, a lot of silt is laid on top, and it's washed out to the Pacific since they had those seven the reactors shut down. solution to pollution is dilution. That's their idea. Yeah, and then for a while they thought um, that the stored waste that was in tanks and some had been directly in this rush to beat out the Russians uh, in the Cold War time, they would sometimes experiment with various ways to make some of these new fuels and stuff. And they'd say, no, that didn't work. And they'd throw it all right next to the power plant in the dirt, in a pit, wow. in a hole. A bulldozer would make a hole. They'd dump it in there and push dirt over it. And that's all throughout the Hanford, the bend in the river. And then that's above Richland, that bend. And it's all in that spot in these different things. And Columbia uh, River Keepers has the map of where they did all these different operations in there. It's probably in the website of Hanford or something, if you look into it. Well, this is the thing. We have known about this. Like, there's a couple of things oh, that Oh, I had to say one urgent, last part though. about that with the river. We have a sense of urgency, though, now, because it seems as if we've had some sense of wanting to take care of it and wanting to manage it and have some type of oversight, Who's right? Who's we? Our country, our government. Our country, yeah. Like, they have really made an effort, but... In Department the last, of Energy the is that part of The last few weeks, country. though, the Trump administration literally has barred the uh, Nuclear Facilities Defense Board from actually safety board from going on site to the Hanford site. They're not allowed to go on unless they are asked on. They're not allowed to talk to their employees anymore. They're not, unless the employees get clearance. They're from definitely Department up of to Energy. some shenanigans. Is he with the Russians? The, but this is the bad thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is. He is. <laughs> but then we have the Department of Ecology telling us with this 107-page report that I found this week mm -hmm. that there's a lot of very unstable... That's the Washington Department of Ecology. Yeah, it says Hanford.gov. Mm -hmm. So that's where I found it, and that's where I downloaded it from there. Mm -hmm. And it and Hanford itself has been operated by the Department of Energy, which I find just ridiculous that the Department of Energy uses up all its money on making weapons and being in charge of making missiles and stuff when they're supposed to be making windmills and nuclear power this plants. This is actually Not. stunning. Louisa and I, we're getting off a little off topic here, I know. Louisa. We have we're to return or start a different one. Well, we got a few more minutes. I'm going to prod us on, but I really... I like this one. Is a good one. I want to, today, while we were doing research for this radio show today, we went to what was it, uh, nuclear, worldnuclear.net. It was some or oversight, a pro nuclear site that talked about what was MOX fuel, and we were reading oh, about yeah. it. Oh, yeah. I said, what is MOX fuel? Yeah, and we started looking and studying into what exactly that is because. I said, well, all I know, it's like the worst stuff you can well, have. That was my thing. No, we had just read that uh, about nuclear fallout, that the right. third reactor at Fukushima that blew eight years ago had MOX fuel in it. Right. That meant it splatted into the air with a cloud that landed in Oregon, right. and that has plutonium in it. Some people think it was to make Hanford not be blamed for all the radiation in the area. Mm-hmm. They knew it would happen. Americans built but, uh, Fukushima where anyways, it is. Anyways, get back to the point here is while we were doing this, we read on there that all of the nuclear power facilities in the world make 70 tons of plutonium a year. 
That's a lot of plutonium. Yeah, they use MOX fuel all over the place. And there's 100 nuclear power plants that are commercial in America, but there's 11 that are going on right now at the militaries up the Columbia River system in the Snake River, about two hours drive from the Yellowstone and the Rocky Mountains is Idaho National Labs, nuclear labs. And that's run by the Navy in the old days for that's training. That's also one of, considered one of the legacy sites. It was involved in the Manhattan Project. And mm -hmm. all the Manhattan Project sites are termed legacy sites. So, Louisa, we're 15 minutes in. I want us to talk about the actions that we took this week. So let's kind of leave this aside and talk about how uh, this week, Louisa and I went over to see Ron Wyden's office this week. I, Who's Ron Wyden? Well, Ron Wyden is my senator and her my senator. My senator, yeah. So and the, I made an appointment with him a couple of weeks ago myself when I started reading. I, I started spitting nails, to be honest, you guys, when I saw this thing about uh, they changed their high-level radioactive waste to low-level, just unilaterally. The name. Yeah. They just changed it by name, but you're not going to instantly make high-level waste into low-level waste just because you decided And that high-level is. is what I was talking about, plutonium. Right. So, but then the next week, they bar the Nuclear Safety Oversight Board. I was like, what? And now we get this report from Hanford that says every, there's a lot of falling apart buildings up there that really need urgent help, and they give these four things at what we could do, right? So... This is the thing that we have a sense of urgency. I mean, I honestly, so I called up Ron Wyden's office and I call up all of my elected officials. In fact, I have been calling with them the daily. federal elected officials and, and my the state. state. I call okay. my state and my. So, federal. who were your elected officials you called up? Uh, I did call uh, Nancy Nathanson's office. She's what? She's my. Uh, state representative. State rep of Oregon state rep, okay? Yeah, and she's from my district. District, okay. Right. And, I, and don't, then? I think it's 13, but I'm not sure. Okay. And then my state representative is uh, Senator Manning. He's my state senator. To go to Salem, Oregon, and go to talk about Oregon issues, right? Yeah, he, well, Nancy Nathanson works out of Salem also. Right, and she's your so. representative, so she talks about this senator. region. Well, she's in the House. Of in this, the state of Oregon, uh, yes. not the I'm not, federal. I'm not going to give like a civics lesson, Louisa. Let me just explain I what we're doing here. I okay, am. I am. <laughs> so like, if you want me to give a civics lesson on how government works, we can use that for another day. Well, that's what I wanted to but, do on this is how to get to our well, elected the thing officials. Is, all you have to do is type into Google. This is how simple it is. Oh. Who are my elected officials? Great. And there are several websites that will take you. You put nine your whatever your zip code is in, cool. and it pops up it tells you who your county commissioners are it tells you who your state representatives so are it tells you who your federal Thank representatives you. are very easy and if you are not so registered to vote many of them will take you to sites that will register you to vote hmm. and you can verify your voting status too. Thank you so those are really those are good online tools that they do make very available to people All right so uh, what I did was I call my, but I do, I, I actually printed out, I went to the website of the house.gov and the senate.gov and I looked for the list of representatives. I do this at every time we have an election and I print out the names. <laughs> the house has over 300 people, so it's several pages long. The senate is 100 people and it turns into one page with 50 on each name, single, single ones. And so I keep a file on my desk, and I also went to uh, um, MediaMatters.org, and they have a list of all of the news media's phone numbers. So I call MSNBC and give Rachel Maddow a Tokyo Rose Alert all the time, as a matter of fact, because <laughs> she toes the party line. That's my opinions, though. Oh, you know who they are. Yeah, so she's, she's not a TV person. See, I'm on an unabashed TV person. I never watched But it. I'm sort of a C-SPAN freak. But this is why it matters. So I called Ron Wyden's office, and then I told Louisa, and Louisa said, well, let's go together. So when we got there, Louisa asked if we and could record and come as, like, the radio show. And didn't you think, you know, like I said, do you want to go by yourself and just do your own presentation, or do you think it would be better? And I said, I think it would be better to show two people. Yeah, too. I agree. 
So we went together, and what I did beforehand was <clears> I <throat> actually got a little zip drive, and I put the articles that led me to the information that got me outraged on the Executive Order 140. And me outraged. Yes, Executive Order 140.1, I got that and put it on there. And I also got, like, a couple of newspaper articles that explain what that does. That's the one about reclassifying the nuclear waste and barring the nuclear safety all of these things, and I put Did all Did you of put those the article about the uh, fault line from the yes, Earth I Island Journal? Yes, I gave that to them last time. Because mm. I have gone there. This is the second time I've given them a zip drive of stuff, and mm. she still has it. Okay, good. So I asked her. I did confirm that with her that oh, she good, still good. had it. Because yeah. did she need it again? She's like, Because no, that's the one that clinched me that I went, oh, we better shut it now. Yes, but that was in 2014, you guys. Mm -hmm. And here we are, 2019, and the Columbia Generating Station is still open. And got and a so, good rating this year. Louisa and I went in there. Now, this is a very bit of an interesting thing I, I would love to share with you. Louisa's idea was that we could vide videotape it and use it for our radio show for this evening or something like this. But June Chada, who is Ron Wyden's assistant, who I've been chatting with and talking to, she emails me. I met her at a protest here. She approached me <laughs> because I said some things about Ron Wyden that weren't the most sympathetic and she wanted to convince me he really cares about us that's her job and she does a good job actually she's awesome uh, but, but she basically said look if you come in here as the press after that we can't see you as citizens you're gonna always be deemed the press did oh, you get that I didn't oh you didn't hear that so well, good I think came what, in as citizens that's what I said that's what I knew that there was like you can only go the press way or the citizen way okay. I didn't know that it was irreversible though so that was a bit of good information for those of you who think that you might want to go visit Isn't your Isn't that senators. beautiful, the power of just being a citizen who's concerned and has found some good information that should be brought to your elected officials so they make wise, science-based decisions. And fear-based decisions because they know we're watching them, too. <laughs> they can't just ignore us. Like, that's really... How about love-based? <laughs> I want to say, like I think, I love they, you, honestly, Ron Wyden. Gonna, they, you know, the reason we have Hamford and everything else in such a mess is because they've all been clicking their heels and saying Sig Heil. It's time for us to stop them. Hey, how about we just say they work for us, okay? Because I am a citizen, and they are um, eating up our taxes. Well, see, this is the they thing. Do what I we do need. understand this about our elected officials. They have their hearts in the right place, but they do understand the monsters that we're up against. It's not easy to buck these people yeah. because they can spend money and primary them out and get them out of office. So they walk right. a fine line of like... And June has said that she, from Ron Wyden being Democrat, that they are, have their hands tied in the federal world because of Congress now being Republican controlled. Yeah. You know what else she said? Was that it would be a, it, what really matters is having citizens like us go into their offices and making efforts and continually to voice our not just one time, but she said it matters that you guys continue because it shows that you yeah. really mean it. It's not just something you saw on the newspaper. I right? woke up this morning remembering her saying, Thank you for bringing me this information because without right. that, we wouldn't have it because I didn't know about this right. and neither did Ron. And she's been his assistant for. 20, and honestly, 26 years or something. That is one of the things I learned from Donna Gilmore, and that is a website everybody who cares about the nuclear catastrophe. You can get great educational information for your, your own little neck of the woods at sananofresafety.org. She has a list of the whole tech. She has a list of the casts, a literal list that she compiled of all the storage waste tanks in the country. Hmm. And she tells us how, like ours at the Columbia Generating Station, there are two sets of casts. They each have 27, we have a total of 27 ca casts, and they're all welded, and each one has 67 rods, rods in it. Um, or assemblies. And they are just sitting there, those assemblies, <clears throat> yes. Fuel assemblies. It's just. That we hoped were uranium, but some might thing. be not. This is the thing, all of this is just sitting there, like it's just waiting for the, uh, or, I mean, imagine, we are having earthquakes. Well, how about we go into that, Mark? for whatever reactor GE Mark IV reactor is what is the Columbia Generating Station's nuclear machine identical to the one in Fukushima and at Pilgrim uh, Pilgrim was recently shut down because the judge deemed that Pilgrim was a danger to the environment to run that's why and that is honestly Diane Turco said she's going to help me figure out how to make that argument to our elected officials yeah and here's the other thing the reason that we're concerned is because 
that style of nuclear reactor puts the fuel safely inside the containment building above the reactor core. But as we saw, it all goes kablango and falls into the reactor core when it's having a meltdown and every all the waste fuel. And you have this huge critical thing and it's all a humongous mess and it keeps going on like <laughs> Fukushima. Humongous. It's having it a freaking other type of a it's explosion. It's beyond comprehension. So let me... That think, nuclear waste I, can have I do want to give some meltdowns. information out to, though, to at least the people in our areas right. in case... You know, this is, I'm not telling you what to do, but I am going to uh, give you the phone number for Peter DeFazio um, because we all have a right to call our congressman. If you feel like calling your congressman, Peter DeFazio, by the way, is uh, the chairman of the Transportation Committee right now. And so the reason I called his office was that office there at the Transportation Department was to tell them, like, you guys have oversight. Of the nuclear the waste being transported with this new exactly. uh, name that uh, Trump is, with executive order, renaming the nuclear dangerous High, waste as fine, low level, just easy. Low level waste you can drive it right on a truck down the highway over to Utah or Texas and people won't from Hanford and the there. WIP site and from your nuclear power plants and just drive it on over and we'll take care of and it. And believe you me, his office was plenty interested. I, his Washington, D.C. office, oh, here, let me give you his local Eugene office, 541-465-6732. I'm going to get going really quick. I'm going to also give you Jeff Merkley's phone number in case you want to call him. What is him. Jeff? He is? Jeff Merkley is our senator. He's our federal senator. Mm -hmm. He's in the Senate. We have two senators and one congressman. In federal. In the federal. And this is in every state has different, right? So this is Jeff Merkley and Eugene is 541-431-0229. Sorry, I had to squint to see that number. Uh, is that Jeff Merkley? Oh, yeah, that was Ron Wyden's, you guys. I beg your pardon. Ron Wyden was that. Happy Ron is me. our senator. Ron is our senator and Jeff Merkley is our senator. We yep. have two senators. 541 mm -hmm. two two nine. That is Ron Wyden's office. And that, if you go in there, you'll likely meet up with June. June Chata, the woman that we met with. Yep. She's adorable, actually. And she has now been uh, apprised of these concerns and wants to know more. And if people call her, I will tell you it matters. They do listen when you do call. So I'm not telling you to call. I'm just giving you the phone numbers. It's 541. Huh. That is awful small. 541-465-6750. <laughs> 4656750. So I think we're just about out of time, as you heard my little beeper go off there just a minute ago. But um, thank you for joining us. Let me get ourselves back to wherever it is we are here on our. Hold on, pecan. And we want you to shut the Columbia Generating Station any way you can. Any way you can. The thing is, we want you to understand for yourself. We want you to get educated yourself. We're not telling you what to do. We are suggesting that there is a grave issue in our community that nobody talks about. Actually, I'm calling out to you to please help me because I've been working on this a long time, and now we need to get it done now that we've heard about the earthquake. Louisa, I am going to stop you. I don't think we can say that. Okay. We cannot. We As, as nonprofits, the story is we cannot have this call to arms. Hmm. So. Okay, so uh, there we go. Sorry about that. I couldn't figure out where we were. <laughs> I was looking all over the internet, closing all these windows that I had open, you guys. Anyways, uh, put your courage feet on, as we say, and we'll talk to you guys later. Thank you for joining The Last Nuke. This is Lonnie Clark. And this is Louisa Hemacek. And we've been listening to The, the Last, Last Nuke. Nuke. <laughs>